There aren't many American families with a more infamous last name than the Kennedys, and it seems like every decade at least one new member of that family throws their hat into the ring when it comes to running for President of the United States. This time, it's Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s turn. The son of Bobby Kennedy and the nephew of John F. Kennedy, both of whom were tragically assassinated, has now decided to follow in his forebearer's footsteps by launching a campaign to run for president in 2024. Beside him is his lovely wife, Cheryl Hines. These two got married back in 2014, and while they've already been through some ups and downs, Cheryl has supported her controversial hubby's bid for the White House, even if polls suggest that only about 14% of the American public are right there with her. Of course, if Robert doesn't come away with the victory, I don't think he'll be too broken up about it. After all, he and Cheryl are currently living an enviable lifestyle out on the West Coast in Los Angeles, California, and who wants to throw a monkey wrench into something like like that. It was just a little over a month after getting hitched that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Cheryl Hines plopped down $5 million to secure themselves a landlocked compound in the heart of Malibu's Point Doom. Now, there are many things that come to mind when you think of Malibu, but a New England style farmhouse probably isn't one of them. And yet, that's exactly what Robert and Cheryl found. Property records describe this estate as a Connecticut compound in Malibu, and the property was pre previously owned by the eight-time Emmy-winning composer David Kurtz. This gorgeously landscaped tree-lined property spans just under one acre of land with a single-story barn-like main house that boasts four bedrooms and three bathrooms packed into a modest 2,959 square feet of space. Inside the main house, you'll find a fully wood-paneled great room. I'm talking on the walls and up top on the vaulted ceiling. Meanwhile, beneath your feet, you'll be walking on bone-colored wood floors, and there are further details like built-in shelves alongside a raised hearth fireplace. Adjoining that space is a porch that could easily be repurposed as a sun-drenched dining room. There's also a nearby media room that doubles as a library thanks to its built-in shelving units alongside a high-tech and fully integrated surround sound system. As for the shaped kitchen. It boasts chunky wood beams all along the ceiling with oversized multi-pane windows, white ceramic tile countertops, knotted cabinets, a center island snack counter, and a breakfast nook. Among its other living spaces are four spacious bedrooms of which the master suite boasts a fully updated bathroom with a massive walk-in closet. Meanwhile, French and sliding doors around the property extend the living spaces to the outdoors where brick decking surrounds a tiled swimming pool area with an accompanying spa. Not far from from there is a detached studio style guest cottage with a vaulted ceiling of its own as well as a massive red brick fireplace in a private bathroom. But that's not all. A third building houses a two room soundproof recording studio on its first floor alongside a skylit and wood floored office with a fireplace on the second. There's also a pool house with a fully wood paneled lounge plus a small kitchen and a sleeping loft. Other amenities are said to include a refrigerated wine shed as well as a two-story treehouse, fire pit, a built-in barbecue, and a small storage barn. After purchasing this home in September 2014, Robert and Cheryl would list the home three years later, ultimately selling it for just over six million dollars, making themselves a little profit in the process. Then they moved to Brentwood. After selling their home in Point Doom, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Cheryl Hines paid 5.2 million dollars for a home in Brentwood's rustic and horse-friendly Mandeville Canyon. Described as a the Monterey Colonial, their new home boasted 4,034 square feet with five bedrooms as well as four bathrooms and was originally built in 1937. Situated discreetly behind a security gate, the home's living spaces, including the formal living and dining rooms and the kitchen, all of which contain generous amounts of space as well as expensive decorative items and high-end appliances. The five bedrooms are located on the home's second floor and the master suite includes a private covered balcony as well as a glass walled shower and soaking tub in the ensuite bath. Over the five years that they lived here, Robert and Cheryl made several alterations. They started by completely redoing the front yard, replacing a brick accented concrete parking pad with a more refined cobblestone one. When it came to work on the kitchen, they swapped out a giant marble dining table for an even bigger white marble topped work island and snack bar. Then in the backyard, they ripped out a large portion of the lawn, paved over it with stone tiles, and added a fire pit not far from from their eye-shaped spa that spills into a free-form swimming pool surrounded by stone terracing. 
According to listing materials, the home also included a semi-attached garage with a guest suite and private bathroom, should other members of the Kennedy clan ever stop by for a visit. Shortly after finishing these renos, Robert and Cheryl listed this home for $6.2 million. They quickly found a buyer, and then paid a little bit more than that, $6.6 .6 million to be exact, to buy a second home in the same neighborhood. Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s new home is reportedly slightly larger than his old one, and it's said to include five bedrooms in the main house alongside a separate studio style guest suite. While details on this property are slim, it's believed to include a tiki bar as well as a lagoon style swimming pool with lush, densely packed gardens, flowering plants, and several kinds of fruit trees. Sounds like their new home is pretty much paradise, right? Well, before I wrap this story up, I'm gonna take you inside one of Robert's former residences that was the exact opposite of that. Before he met Cheryl Hines, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was married to Mary Kennedy, and these two raised a family out of a home in Westchester County, New York. Situated in the town of Mount Kisco, this estate was originally built in 1920, but was remodeled in the early 2000s after a flood infested it with black mold. Rather than abandon the property, Mary and Robert decided to salvage it by spending years, turning it into the epitome of an eco-friendly estate with the help of their friend, Jim Blansfield. Mary was both an architect and an environmentalist, so it makes sense that a project like this would have been near and dear to her heart. The family lawyer would tell Newsweek, she loved the house, she worked very hard to make the house what it was, and she wanted very much to always stay there. Boasting 10,000 square feet of space, this colonial style home sits atop 10 acres of land and includes three levels with seven bedrooms, nine bathrooms, a library with a fireplace, a rec room with its own kitchen, an elevator, and even a private lake. But without a doubt, the coolest thing about this estate was how Mary redesigned it to maximize its energy and water efficiency while also promoting better indoor air quality. Aside from its modern appliances, the Kennedy Greenhouse, as it came to be known, was mostly constructed out of recycled or reclaimed materials, like doors taken from a former mental institution upstate, as well as wood that fell around the property and was then repurposed for tiles and floors. In fact, the whole home boasts low-cost geothermal power as well as LED and fiber optic lighting. There's even insulation made out of recycled newspapers and soybean. Once the rebuild was done, Mary decorated the sprawling estate like some sort of presidential museum. Her sense of style could be seen everywhere, from the living room to the library, including Kennedy family arts and campaign materials that line the home's halls. Then, there's the residence's incredible study, which was not only filled with books, but also featured a desk that had previously belonged to the late Senator Ted Kennedy. In the early 2010s, the former couple's marriage was on the rocks, and the Kennedys found themselves in the midst of a divorce. Devastated that she might lose the home she loved so much, Mary took drastic action, ending her life in the barn just outside of their family home in 2012. With both of their names still in the deed, ownership automatically automatically reverted to Bobby, who then listed the property a few months later for $4 million. It would take a little over a year for someone to show interest, but he eventually offloaded the estate in 2013 for $3.95 million. Not exactly the most heartwarming way to end this story, to be sure, but that's kind of the Kennedy brand, isn't it? Tragedy seems to follow this family around, self-imposed or not. I guess we'll just have to wait and see if that continues being the case should Robert F. Kennedy Jr. defy the odds by actually becoming President of the United States. Then again, odds are much more likely he'll be back home in Brentwood come early 2025, but I don't know. In the meantime, consider answering the following question. If a loved one passed away in the very home you live in, would you continue to live there? Let me know if you'd stay or if the memories would be too painful in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications to make sure you never miss another house tour. My name's Kara, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.